What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be talking about the 5 tips for parametric families in Revit. Now, parametric families are very useful, they are really great when working on projects, you can adapt them to certain situations, They're, they can be really easy to use and they can just get a lot of the job done. Now, unfortunately they're extremely complex to model in some cases, so I thought I, I would make a tutorial just outlining the 5 tips or tricks for these families, just some of the things that you should think about when creating uh, these. Uh, now this will be just a, a little window into the extremely complex world of parametric family creation. Now if you want to have a complete introduction, I have a one hour course on creating parametric families in Revit, it's sort of a, an introduction to parametric families. So if you're interested in something like that, check it out, first link in the description takes you to my Patreon, there you can get access to this course as well as all of my other advanced courses. I've got like over 40 hours of content there and also you get all of my Revit project files. I've got like over 300 files so far. Okay, with that out of the way, without any further ado, let's get into the tutorial. The first tip is going to have a lot to do with the start of a new family. So when we want to start a new family, here we are in the Revit start page. I'm just going to go here to families and here we have the option to start a new family. Now when we click there, here we have to choose the template. Now this is the, the first tip and that's choosing the correct template for each family. So for families, templates are going to have a lot of functionality inside of them. And here, uh, these are just the metric, English metric families. And if I just scroll all the way down, you can see we have many, many options. Uh, now here, this might uh, kind of look similar to the uh, to all of the tools in Revit. So here we have the doors, and the bottom we have windows, and we have much more uh, in between. Now make sure to ch uh, to choose the correct uh, to choose the correct template for what you're trying to do, and make sure to understand that your template doesn't really have to mean your family category. So for example, if we want to create a line-based family, here we have the option to for a metric generic line-based family. This line-based family can be used to create, for example, furniture, some line-based furniture, uh, like some inbuilt cupboards or something like that. So even though that's uh, that will be later on a furniture family, a furniture category family, we have to start off with the metric generic model. And we can change the category later on, but the template we can't change. So that's why I just suggest you make sure to ch choose the correct template. So in this case, we're just going to go with the generic uh, metric generic model and let me open that up. And here you will see you have the option to change the category just by going here to the properties and then uh, here we have the family category and parameters. So even though this was started as a generic model, you can just easily change it to perhaps doors and click OK and there we go. Now this is a door family and here in the properties it says family doors. If we go back here and change it back to generic models, now here in the properties it says family generic models. So changing the category can be done at all times, but changing the template and the functionality that comes with the template that you can only do in the beginning. Okay, the second tip is going to be referring to the parameters. So let's create some geometry so I can explain the two types of parameters that we can create. So here I'm just going to go with a simple extrusion and let's go with a circle and I'm just going to do a circle here. Uh, now here we have the dimension that's giving us the like the diameter of the circle and here I'm just going to click and that this says make temporary dimension, uh, just a permanent dimension and here now we have this dimension and we can turn this dimension into a parameter. So you simply go by going here to label dimension and then we click here to create parameter. Now we, we're just going to call this one parameter one. And then here we have the option to choose is it a type parameter or an instance parameter. Now this is really important. This is what the, this step is all about. Now the type parameter is going to be referring to the type. So that basically means it's for each instance of your uh, family and your project, the type parameter is going to affect that family. So if you have maybe five families or five, for example, windows loaded in, and if you change the height of the window, if that height is a type parameter, it's just going to change all of those windows. If it were an instance parameter, it would only change the one window that you selected. Now, uh, if that doesn't make sense, don't worry, it will in a second. I'm just going to save this as a type parameter, so just keep uh, keep that in mind. So this circle is a type parameter, and then let's hit finish. 
go into 3D. So there we go. We have this family, and that has the uh, uh, that that has the type parameter. Now let's go back here into reference level. Let's go to create extrusion, and let's do a rectangle, for example. And for this one, let's select this line. Let's make this temporary dimension uh, a regular dimension, and let's add a a new parameter here. Now this will be an instance parameter, and this will be parameter two. And let's call it instance. There we go. Click OK. And we can check all of the parameters here in family types. So if I open this up here, you can see that we have the instance one and the parameter one. Actually, let's rename this one so you can go here into edit parameter. And at any time, you can change it from type to instance. Here, we're just going to be changing the name in this case. So this will be type. Hit OK. Apply. There we go. OK, if I just hit finish, there we go go into 3D and this is what we have. Now let's go ahead and load this into a project. So for that, I have to start off a new project. So I'm just going to go here to new project and let's make it an architectural template project. There we go. And what I'm going to do is just for this project, kind of undock it. And then I'm just going to dock it here to the side, just so we can differentiate from our, our project to our family. Okay, now I want to load this family into my project. So I'm just going to go here to load into project. And as you can see here, we can place it. So let's go ahead and make this window a bit bigger. There we go. Okay, so here we have this family inside of the project. And that's, it's called family one, just because we haven't changed the name. And for our instance parameter, it's over here. It's in the properties panel here. This is the instance parameter, and this is the height. So if I change this instance parameter to, I don't know, something like 2000, hit apply. There we go. As you can see, that change was made. But if we look for our parameter one, you're going to notice that we can't find it. That's because that's a type parameter. So in order to find the type parameter, you need to go here into edit type and open that dialog up. And then here we have that parameter. So if I go ahead and make a change to this, maybe into 800, and then hit apply. Now, as you can see, it changes that circle. So type parameters are only going to appear here in the edit type uh, dialog and instance parameters are going to appear here in the properties parameter. Now, that's uh, the least important part about this. And uh, the most important part is if I select this family and go to maybe component and let's add a couple of more, you're going to notice that if I select perhaps this family and if I change the instance parameter, let's change it to 500. It's only going to change this instance, so only this one. But if I select this one, for example, and go into edit type and change this parameter to 300 and hit apply, you're going to notice that it change, changes all of these. So type parameters are basically changing the whole type. So it affects each family inside of the project, but instance families only affect the selected family. So in this case, this is only this family. So only this family will change. So that's basically the difference between type and instance parameters. Now, the next step is also connected to those instance parameters. So let's go back here into our family. If I can only select this to stretch it, there we go. Okay, so let's go back to the family. Let's go back here into reference level. And what I'm just going to do is move this a bit and perhaps attach it over here and lock it in place to this main reference plane. And then what I'm going to do is go to create and create a new reference plane. So for this one, I'm just going to place it over here just like that on this edge, just as so, and then make sure to attach this. So basically select your shape, you de de disattach it from the, uh, from the reference plane, then you reattach it, and then you hit the little uh, lock symbol. And that means that this is now locked in place. So if we move the reference plane, it's going to move the dimension of this uh, rectangle. The next thing is to create this dimension over here. And we have to set this up as an, uh, 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 just as an instance parameter. So you basically set that, uh, select that dimension, go here and create a new parameter. Let's call it parameter number one and make sure that it's an instance parameter. Click OK. There we go. So it says one equals and then the, the whole number. Now this uh, instance parameter, we're not going to be changing it manually by typing in the number, but we're going to be changing it intuitively and basically the, through 
uh, playing around and shaping the family just because this instance parameter allows us to create a, uh, a shape handle so let's load this into the project so I can explain how that works so now if I just expand project there we go if I select this family now it's going to get these two shape handles those two shape handles are at the beginning and the at, at the end of this dimension and those are these two reference planes so if I select this we get these two shape handles and then we can basically control the size of this family manually and each can be a different size just because it's an instance parameter so there you go that's how you can add these cool shape handles and you can basically manually adjust the dimensions of the family so if you're just into intuitively trying to get to something, some shape that you uh, like, you can use this, uh, you can use this option in order to do well, to create that shape. Okay, the next thing that I wanted to show you, the next tip will, uh, will be uh, nesting families. So let's perhaps move this off to the side. Let's go back here and let's say we want to add another family within this family. Well, that's possible and it's quite easy to insert uh, some families into your existing family. You would do that in certain cases where you have maybe some certain geometry that you want to lock or move around that's quite complex itself. For example, uh, it can be a door handle or something like that. So, for example, uh, for something like that, we can go here to insert and then we can load in a family. So, in this case, let's say uh, we want to add a door handle. We can go here into doors, go into hardware. Here we have some handles. Now, this isn't the door family, but you get the point. Now, I'm just going to go here with a simple handle louver, lever and then let's go here to create, go to component. And as you can see, we can just place this and you can place it anywhere. And what's really great about these families is you can place it and then you can use uh, the align tool. So AL is the shortcut. This is the align tool to align that family in place. So you just try to find the kind of the, the largest line that appears there. So for example, here, this is the largest line. And now we can just basically lock it to the center of this particular family. Okay, it looks kind of weird here but uh, on a door that would look nice. So basically this is a nested family that's uh, within this project. So that's really cool that you can basically nest infinitely families within families. But here we may come to a specific problem. If I select this uh, handle family, and then if I go into edit type, you're going to notice that here we have a couple of parameters. So for example, here we have a material and finishes parameter and we have the material which can be adjusted and here it's set to aluminum. So let's say we want to change the material of this family, but we want to change that within this project. So if I were to load this family into the project, let's override open this up so here we go here's that lever but if uh, lever sorry <laughs> here's that lever so if I select this family you're going to notice that we don't really have an option to change that lever material we can only change the main family but not the parameters of the nested family inside so for something like that what we have to do is we have to learn how to nest parameters so not only families but their parameters as well so to do something like that, what you need to do is first go here into family types where you can see all of the parameters for your family, then go ahead and create a new parameter and let's call this one handle material. And this can be an instance parameter. And then here for the type of parameter, here it says a length, let's change that to material. There we go. And then let's click OK. So here we have that handle material uh, parameter. Now, once we have created that parameter, we need to select our handle, go here into edit type, and then here for this material, go to this little, uh, this little gray rectangle in the corner. Now, this is not to be confused with this rectangle with three dots, not that one, the one here on the side. So you click there and it says associate family parameter, and now we can select this parameter, click OK, apply okay and it basically connects this parameter to this here handle uh, handle material so if you want to change the material of this handle in this family now and let's load this family into the project override it there we go so now if we select this and go into or not into edit type if we just go here to properties here we have that handle material parameter and we can just change that parameter and change the uh, nested uh, nested families material so this is not only how can you nest fam 
how can you nest families but also how can you nest materials as well okay let's go back and for the final tip I wanted to show you something that I see people neglecting all the time and that's creating family types so for creating family types you have to go here into your family go into well the family types dialog of course open that up and here we have the type name now we don't really have any types so that's why we, this is blank so you just click here and create a new type name we can just call it type 1 and then here you can have certain presets for all of your parameters so for example this can be 600 by okay we can just leave this as is and then here we can make this aluminum then we can go ahead and add a new type let's call this one type 2 and in this case this will be wood uh, let's search for wood material okay let's load this in There we go. Okay, so this is type 2, and then this uh, type parameter can be, I don't know, like 800, and then hit apply. Okay, there we go. Now, if we load this into the project and just uh, override the existing, let's go ahead and open this up. Here you will have several types. So here we have family type 1 and then we have type 2. Now, the reason that we have family 1 and then type 1 and type 2 is just because we've loaded in and for loaded it in first without any types and then we've added these two so that's the reason and then here you can switch back to type 1 and then this is smaller and if we then go and check the material let's go ahead set this to realistic this is aluminum and then if we change it to type 2 this is wood so there you go that's the difference this is type 1 aluminum this is type 2 would. So basically like that you can make some presets. This is really cool if you have some windows that come in different standard sizes or doors, things like that, that you have some standardized dimensions. You can set those up all uh, properly the, uh, at the exact way that you want. Okay, so that will conclude this tutorial on families, on parametric families and five tips and tricks for making parametric families. I hope you have learned something new and I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. If you want to download the project files or if you want to check out the advanced one hour course on this topic or any of my other advanced courses, I've got over 40 hours of content up on my Patreon, first link in the description. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching and I'll see you with another tutorial in a couple of days. Have a nice day.